Greetings Commanders, it's Ryantium here, and today we are back once again in Stellaris Console Edition with the Gorgonite Devourers. That's right you guys. So today, yes, it has been a second since we've been on Stellaris Console Edition. It's mainly because real life has just kind of gotten in the way with a few things and kind of prohibited me from doing massive recording sessions. Because I'll normally record these videos for, you know, an hour, two hours at a time. So, it's a decent chunk of time to go ahead and carve out, but I gotta, gotta get better at doing that. So I apologize for not having as many videos as frequently as I've wanted them to. But, we're back. And that's the important part. So, we do indeed have a few more targets here in the lovely galaxy that is our home. We were at war with uh, another one of the empires up here, and it's funny, it's been a second since I played, so I can't even remember what the hell the name of the found or the, um, the empire was who we just completely annihilated. But let's see, we should only have our species growing, and we're still purging homologs. Wow! Oh, it was the Rufari Commonwealth. That's what it was. That's what it was. So we're still purging those guys, and then we'll be done with the homologs here very, very soon. Now, truthfully, for the year 2270, we have a fairly small population of Gorgonites. If we take a look at some of the other empires, I wonder how many people do they have in there? 171, 149, 141. Okay, so maybe we have way more than I thought. Because everybody's got, like, no pops. Why are you so small? Are you a one system? Okay, that's why. <laughs> I was like, why do you only have 38 pops? These guys only have 18. So yeah, okay, I guess maybe we're actually way ahead of the pack with almost double what other systems have and other um, empires have. So, now that we have all of this done... I'm going to take a little bit of time and clean up the borders uh, and kind of figure out where the hell our choke points are at. Although, we kind of already have them. The only one that's kind of an issue right now is right here. Corinth and Hilgi, both of these are going to have to act as our choke points. Our choke points. Realistically, I would like to just keep Hilgi. And you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and do that? I don't really need this extra, this extra system right there. And it's only had 11 minerals in it, so it's not that big of a deal. This one, however, is a lot more lucrative. So we'll have our science ship come on over here and take a look at all this stuff. We do now have another wormhole in our space, but we do need to take out the scavenger bot. Look at how cool that thing looks. I love that thing so much. But yeah, so it's just going to be a lot of micromanagement and lots of everything like that. We're going to not go to war for the first part of this episode because I want to make sure that everything is squared away with our borders. I want to make sure that our... Um, you know, choke points are all squared away, and I want to kind of fill in the spaces a little bit and bulk up our fleet a bit more. We are still the most powerful in the galaxy, with the exception of the Militant Isolationists, uh, because that is one of the other Fallen Empires. Is that the only Fallen Empire in this galaxy? There might be another one somewhere like right here or something like that. I have no idea, but we'll see. We shall find out. But... I'm going to go ahead and start the micromanagement, and then uh, I'll bring you guys back in. Okay, so something interesting just actually happened. One, we're actually just about to unlock Mega Engineering, and there it is. But that's not exactly what um, is exciting slash interesting. There are now... That's not a problem. There are now only Federations in our galaxy. There's two Mega Federations. We have the Stellar Alliance and the United Civilized Worlds. Now, the good thing about that is, is they cannot most likely go into any pacts with each other. They can have research agreements and everything like that, but they cannot have, like, defensive agreements. But what that does mean is now we have the powers of three empires, or I should say six empires, with two Federation fleets uh, worth of stuff that they can have there. So that that could be a little bit spicy. That, that could get definitely get a little bit spicy. Now, I'm trying to think of the most, like appropriate target to go to next and it's probably going to be the Imperium of Vogan Fulbrun. Now the thing is once we go to war with the Imperium we're going to go to war with the state over here as well as the High Kingdom and that could be a problem for two reasons. One, if we focus all of our forces over here we leave ourselves completely exposed over here but then if we focus all of our forces over here we'll leave ourselves completely exposed over here. So we really, really do need to go ahead and bulk up our fleets a bit more. We're going to go ahead and start continuing, um, I should say, instead of start, we're going to continue to bulk up our borders and make sure that everything is okay. 
but we just got to focus a bit more on economy. Right now, I'm just going through and upgrading a whole bunch of stuff on my capital planet. We still have districts out the wazoo on our capital planet. We've al we already have 92 pops on this planet. So we're pretty good on that front. But uh, yeah, more economy, more fleet, and uh, everything like that. That's, that's what's going to help us expand a lot faster, especially through warfare. Maybe we'll go to war with the state first. <laughs> the state of here, Alukt, or whatever the hell you are. Perhaps there are star nations in this galaxy that are even more worthless than the Gorgonite Devourers. If so, we have yet to meet them. Maybe you should look in the mirror, asshole. I don't know who we'll go to war with, but whoever we do go to war with, it doesn't matter. I guess it doesn't even matter who the hell we go to war with first, because, uh, well, <laughs> everybody's going to go to war with me eventually. So, we are now over into the repeatables. We're in a bit of a late start, I'd say, but the tech is looking good, honestly, for where we're at right now. We're constantly snowballing a bit more uh, with our tech. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of tech worlds going. The only thing that we're really struggling with right now is alloys. So, we need just a bunch more alloys, obviously. You can never have too many alloys, um, so long as your minerals can keep up. But uh, we do have a couple of the mega structures unlocked. The problem is, I don't really see a reason to go after some of them, because I'm thinking maybe it would be a better idea to wait, maybe to restore some, maybe to build like their strategic coordination center or something like that, and then go straight into Galactic Wonders to get a Dyson Sphere and or a Ring World. But then again, is it even worth it to go after those? Because really all they're going to do is just give us a place for, you know, massive amounts of pops to go. But we already have a place for massive amounts of pops to go, and it's on every single planet that we're going to take. So it might not even be worth it to go into the Ring Worlds, nor would it be worth it to go into the Dyson Spheres. Sure, the Dyson Sphere would be great for energy, obviously, because that's all it does, is generate massive amounts of energy. But I don't know if going down Galactic Wonders would necessarily be the right move. We do have two Ascension Perks left, <clears throat> which is nice. Now, I don't know exactly which ones we should go after, if we don't go down Galactic Wonders. We can take Master Builders, which I do want to I do want to go ahead and take that. So once we get this one, what do we want to go ahead and do here? Not enigmatic not not wow that was hard. Not enigmatic engineering. The Colossus would be fun, but not really worth it. Claim influence, that doesn't matter because we're uh hive mind. Galactic force projection gives us more naval capacity plus fleet command limit, which is nice. Eternal Vigilance is nice because we are going to rely a lot on our citadels and bastions on the borders. But then again, our borders are going to be ever-expanding. It would give them more hull points and more damage, which is always nice. Let's go ahead and pause that so that I don't miss that tech. Technological Ascendancy, kind of a moot point at this point. Executive Vigor, I mean, that would be nice for when we have the uh, Ascension, or the, um, not the Ascension, the, uh, the things you use Unity for. <clears throat> Ambitions. And then Transcendent Learning, not really worth it. Habitats, we don't even have any habitats. So maybe Eternal Vigilance and or Galactic vo uh, Force Projection would be a better investment than Galactic Wonders. I, you know, I just really, really think that it's worth going for right now. Because normally I go for it just because, ooh, big megastructures, go, 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 big megastructures. But at the same time, it's like, I don't really have the alloys to be doing that, and all of our alloys are going to be going into ship production anyways. So doesn't really see I don't really see a point for that but we are we are continuing to um, bulk up our fleets a bit more and uh, we just need to fill in a bunch of the holes here inside of our space it makes me it just it drives me insane when I see holes in my space whether they've got enemies in them or they just haven't been surveyed like this right here driving me up the wall <laughs> because I can't get in there and get all of that stuff I can technically but it would look weird and it would make choke points you know not really a thing to focus on. Now, I do see that we have a whole lot of planets uh, that we can actually, you know, uh, go and colonize. The thing is, though, should we colonize these planets? Because all it's going to do is, well, I mean, it'll give us extra base resource production. So maybe we should. Maybe that would be a silly thing not to do. Research mm, possibly so. Possibly, possibly. Okay, so, shocker, uh, it turns out the answer to my last question, should I colonize all of the places? Yes, I should colonize all of the places. So here comes every single colony ship that we need to go ahead and colonize every single one of the planets that is out there in my space that is green, which just so happens to be all of them, which is kind of nice. So all this is really going to do 
is, you know, bulk up our raw resource production and give us a lot more places to go ahead and uh, start building new alloy foundries and such. Now, our hive capital is quite overdeveloped at the moment, but it's only because I wanted to make sure that all of these buildings on here were good to go. And we're still keeping up with our strategic resources. The crazy part is... We upgraded all of these, and they're all using gas. You can really see the amount of gas that we're spending. Minus eight, yet we still have a positive seven. Kind of nice. Kind of, kind of nice, honestly. But we still have so many districts on, like, all of our planets, we should be honestly okay. Now, the reason I'm pumping shields uh, is normally I go with shields. Because uh, normally, you know, I tend to go with the unbidden. I tend to have the unbidden, I should say. Uh, and if the unbidden shows up, then, you know, we're going to be completely fine. So we do actually need to go ahead and get a science ship up here to survey that spot because that is a major weak point. Where does this actually lead to? Oh, it's in our space. Oh, right. That's how we got up there. <laughs> Good one, Ryan. Uh, so yeah, that is something that we need to take care of. What do we have down here? Can we take care of this stuff? Yeah, we can. All right. So we'll just continue to fill in all the holes and everything like that. And uh, the fleets are looking mighty powerful. Oh, goodness. Silly, silly people. Thanks for the no thanks for another planet <laughs> to colonize. The primitives nuked each other. Now, wait a second. Are there cockroaches on there? I don't think there's any cockroaches on that planet. Damn it. I was going to say, they could become our main species now. <laughs> but yeah, overall, things are starting to get a lot better. Um, our fleets are looking mighty, mighty fine. Yeah, 68, 17, 23. Yeah, that's totally fine. It'll be great for going up against the regular empires, but we do indeed need to go ahead and uh, just start power leveling everything. Oh, Supremacy's done. Cool! That's every single one done. And now, the decision needs to be made. <laughs> I need to decide on what the hell I'm going to do. Am I going to do Galactic Wonders? and only go after the Dyson Sphere and maybe the Matter Decompressor? Or am I going to go after something a bit more important? Eternal Vigilance would be so nice, but then again, I don't use defense platforms. I, I just don't use them. I, I'm putting all of my alloys into ships. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what I should do. Galactic Force Projection is, is nice, giving us a plus 80 naval capacity. But, I mean, we can get that by building the Strategic Coordination Center and get even more. This would be good, because then no one could take our technology and use it against us, especially once we get Dark Matter, but it wouldn't really matter. I don't know what... Well, that's certainly a colony, a colony ship stack. My good lord, <laughs> there's so many colony ships! Oh, I love it so much. Let's see, can this guy get anywhere and start exploring? Yeah, he can. Cool. Uh, okay, so yeah, things are going well. We're starting to colonize all of those places, and I think I've made up my mind. So, I'm gonna go with Galactic Wonders. And the reason being is because I want to have a Dyson Sphere and a Matter Decompressor. Fuck the Ring World. I don't care about the Ring World. If I was doing a regular Empire with a massive amount of trade value or like a Megacorp or anything like that, then sure. I would totally go for the, the Ring World. But the Ring World, I mean, I don't really care about that. Uh, so we're going to go strictly for the Dyson Sphere as well as the Matter Decompressor. Oh, if we can get one of them going, that'll be mint. It'll be great. Oh, hey, I forgot I sent them up here. And we lost one ship. That's honestly kind of sad that we did that. Uh, also, why did I send that guy on freaking? <laughs> what are you doing, Ryan? Send him there. Thank you. Good lord. Uh, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, we're going to go with uh, the Galactic Wonders. Just because I want, I like big shiny things just like that. Uh, we need to go ahead and take this bad boy out just like that. What do we got right here? Capacity overload and that. Just like that. And you know, just for shits and giggles, Omniferous Acquisition, please. Even more minerals, please. Because I want to bump those numbers up really high. A boom bam! 474 a month, I'll take it. And there's our first new colony on a very small planet. Jesus. Twelve. Continue drone production, please. Alright, we'll put that there. And then we'll put in the clone vats, just like that. And the city, just like that. Perfect. 
Oi, oi, oi. So yeah, we're just going through, filling in all the holes. I do realize that we have an L-gate in our system, or in our space. Kind of unfortunate that we have that. But once we have all the alloys uh, that we need, we're going to start upgrading every single one of them to um, citadels. Throw your weight around. Have a diplomatic weight of over 9,000. <laughs> I like that achievement. That's a good one. That's a good one. Props to the Stellaris team. That's funny as hell. Uh, but yeah, so what the hell? Oh, it's because we just landed on an ocean planet. I was like, why did we wait that long to get that deck? Also, these two, not going to worry about them. The Mega Art Installation and the Interstellar Assembly. Out of the two, this one's the more important because it gives you unlimited unity, practically. But this one, why would I need that as a, as a hive mind? I'm a fucking hive mind. I'm not going to use it. Go, my glorious swarm. Bring them to their non-existent knees. Cool. We have 160 ships. 166 ships left. Wonderful. And all of the new colonies are starting to just pop up all over the place. It's so satisfying. So what I'm doing is I'm building two of every single building, a city district, and a cloning vat. That should get the colonies up and running pretty dang quickly. And uh, we should start to see a whole bunch of base resource come in. Just a whole mess of it. So now that we've got that done, now we can take out these guys right here. That's a very tiny little void thingy. Can't remember what they're called. Void stars? What? what the, void clouds? Void clouds, that's right. And then we'll come down here and we'll take this little bad boy out, the little crystalline structures. And then where is that big system with a whole bunch of stuff in it? Down here. Pathavon is where we're going to go. Oh god, we have two L-gates. I hate L-gates. <laughs> I hate distant stars. No, I'm kidding. I hate L-gates so freaking much, though. What is this planet? Oh my god. What is this little tiny planet? Why is this a thing? <laughs> what the hell did I do to deserve a planet with this few amount of districts? No, you know what? It's not even worth it. Not even worth having that thing there. Fuck this planet. Get him off. There we go. <laughs> a size 10 planet. I should have seen that before I colonized it. What a dinky little planet. Oh my goodness. Alright, then we'll come down here and just take that out right there. We'll lose a few Corvettes, but honestly, they're cheap and easy to build. These guys are getting pretty ballsy, freaking coming down here next to the uh, xenophobic isolationists. What I should do, it'd be the biggest dick move ever. I saw it in a YouTube video once. The person went ahead and colonized this little section right here, took the, took the system, then gifted the system to these people, causing the xenophobic isolationists to then go to war with them, not us. <laughs> I don't know if that would work, though, as a devouring swarm, because I don't think you can actually make trade deals with them, can you? Yeah, no, you cannot. We cannot. Damn it! That would have been amazing if I could have done that, though. <laughs> Just go ahead and take that spot and be like, Oh, sorry, here. As a gesture of good faith, here is Gauzor, the system. Oh, sorry, is that right next to the xenophobic isolationist? Sorry, have fun with that. And then just let them wipe them out. Although, then again, that would, that would create a much larger problem for me afterwards, because then I would be sharing a border, a border with them as well. So that, that's not a long-term situation that you want to be in. And here we go. Time to take out the ancient mining ancient mining droids. Sorry about your bad luck. You picked the wrong system to occupy. Just happened to be in my space. Say goodbye and say hello to the swarm. And goodbye. Wonderful. Holy shit! I wish that was kind of swapped, though. I would have taken the 5,000 alloys over 4,000 minerals. That would have been kind of nice. System service. Whoa, now that's an interesting event that just happened. I don't think I've ever seen this one happen before. I honestly kind of just clicked through it without even reading what it was, normally what you do in Stellaris. But we just got a streamlining algorithm, which gives us plus 10% evasion? <laughs> what? Another 10% evasion on top of what we already have with our Corvettes? Uh, how much evasion does that mean our Corvettes are actually going to have? Uh, let's see. 90% evasion, but I feel like it's a lot higher than that. I really do. Holy crap. Okay, uh, that is an amazing event to have happen. Wish that I didn't uh, click through that so that I could actually see what the hell actually just happened, but oh well. Now when the hell did that happen? They're only superior to me now. 
with an equivalent fleet power. Wonderful. Can we actually see how powerful they are? I can't see into their space and I can't see their fleets. Well, boys, we might be getting dark matter a lot earlier than I, expect I expected. Now, the problem is we're probably not actually more powerful than them <clears throat> or on the same playing level field or level playing field. It's only because of our fleet power of our Corvette Swarm. I guarantee you, if we go in there with just our Corvettes, we'll get shredded. So we need to make sure that these guys are at least over 50k before we even think about going in there. Because they've probably got 300k worth of fleet power in there. So, I mean, we could probably pretty pretty well take them. Also, if you're wondering where the 11 influence a month is coming from, I have um, Will to Power on right now. So that's, that's why. And uh, the Unity production is going pretty well so far, honestly. Now, we do indeed actually have the uh, Strategic Coordination Center thing built right here. But I need another 10,000 alloys in order to do that. And honestly, I've just been putting everything into more ships. More, more ships. Um, so we need 44 more ships, 29,158 more alloys for all of that. And now finally, all of the megastructures are researched. And then soon we'll be able to get into the Dyson Sphere and everything like that. But I honestly want to build the Strategic Coordination Center first, then save up and maybe go to war, and then maybe save up again and go uh, for the Dyson Sphere. Okay, now the holes in my empire have been filled in with the exception of the scavenger bot. And I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and end off today's episode by killing the scavenger bot. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to send in all three of my fleets just to make sure that they're battle ready. And uh, we're going to take out the, uh, the scavenger bot. Now we've got our fleet of seven battleships and 24 um, cruisers right there, as well as 190 corvettes. I honestly think we're going to be just fine. <laughs> I hope that we will be just fine, but it'll be a good kind of first test for our fleet. So once they get there, we'll go ahead and take them in, and then we will finally be able to take a look at what's inside of here. However, if I can speak English, I actually think I already know what's inside of there. It's going to be a wormhole that attaches to this system right here. This is a psionic thing. It's a psionic entity, if I'm not mistaken, that's inside of this little system right here, and it's it's disconnected from any known hyperlane. Go ahead, keep talking shit. I will be with you next episode, okay? I will come after you next episode, I promise, okay? You just stay there. You just keep talking shit, all right? But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly where that goes. I've seen this event before where you, once you take this wormhole, it takes you into that system, and there is a psionic avatar or a psionic entity, as well as kind of like a broken tanker, I think is what it's called. Um, but our planets are starting to just explode. Like, it's insane. So much growth all over the place. We've gotten 528 pops in today's episode. I mean, look at that. We had how many? 294 at the beginning. Now we're up to 529. I will take that and run with it. So we are absolutely one of the most powerful empires, if not the most powerful empire in the galaxy at the moment. None of the other regular empires are anywhere close to our fleet power. And uh, hell, even the Fallen Empire over here is starting to look pale in comparison to us which is kind of nice so once they get there we're going to take out the scavenger bot and then we'll be done with today's episode all right they are in position so let's send them in after the scavenger bot and just to give them the best fighting chance that they can get let's go ahead and load them up with exotic gases volatile moats volatile that everything there we go and look at that, that Centaur Corvette Swarm over 100k. <laughs> oh, I love this game. Alright, so let's turn this scavenger bot into the scrap it's been mining for its entire life. Uh, where's the rest of the fleets? Uh, what you, what, what, what you doing? Uh-huh. Okay, well, that was awkward. Uh, so, rip cruisers, possibly. Although they are just giving it to him. Holy shit! We haven't lost a single cruiser! Okay, cruiser's OP? <laughs> are you kidding me? We didn't lose a single cruiser! Who straps the scrapper? Who watches the watchman? Cool, the nanite repair system. Nice! Uh, okay. So, yeah. I would dare say, though, we are quite powerful with our cruisers. That just took on an entire scavenger bot. That's awesome. So, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully that you enjoyed, uh, or I'm hoping that you enjoyed today's episode. And until next time, this is Commander Ryantium, signing off.